Hi everyone, it's a um, beautiful Saturday afternoon. Um, I'm just being called to do a little bit of um, work with Tunka Silo. Just using the essential oils and um, have my essential oils here. And I've got some of the floral waters. Um, so before I get started, I always like to just have a little connection to the plants. Um, the essential oils that I have in my range, the essential oils that we're working with, obviously we're part of a being and they are part of a being, they, they come from, from the plants. So um, in my practice, the work, that, the, the work, the way that I work with the essential oils first is just connecting in and tuning in um, with the plant people, the plant spirits, just to, to give thanks for the plant really, or the plants, the many, many plants that have um, given up their lives to bring support for human health, to bring support for animal health. You know, I just think it's really important that we, we honour that and give thanks for that, even if we aren't necessarily comfortable in knowing what we're doing, just, um, just from that intention, just from that knowing, just from that thanks of honouring the plant as a being, honouring the plant um, as a, as a as a spirit and a living yeah a living essence a living being it's um yeah if it's really deep in my heart you know I, I like I like connecting to the plant spirits I like learning about them um hearing them um and in that sense it's I'm quite a novice at that as well it's not something that um with some of the plants comes really easy with me some of the plants are is harder um yeah and so um, I've just been aware of a little lump that Tunka Sila has um, and so I just want to work with some of the essential oils not again it's not kind of like I'm giving this essential oil for uh, that lump um, I'm looking at does her body want to what does her body want to work with is there um, a range of the essential oils that she may choose to work with that um, yeah, can um, work on dissolving fatty lumps, a benign lump, even um, tumours at times. So I worked with a couple of dogs that had tumours that, um, that, that shrunk um, and disappeared. So that's really powerful. It's not going to happen all the time. This is, um, this is what I want us to really understand. It's, I'm getting quite a lot. I've got dog hair all, <laughs> all in my pots. Uh, not in my pots, in my cases. Um, yeah, I, I, I get quite a lot of messages and I know some of my, my friends do as well that work with essential oils where it's like, oh my dog's got X, what essential oil do I, do I give my dog? And the thing is like, um, for people that want to work with essential oils and are working with essential oils, you know, we have that holistic protocol, we have, our dog is a whole ecosystem, so, oh, don't get sealer. Did anyone see that Facebook post on like, whenever a dog stretches, you have to say, good stretch and it's really funny because every time she stretches that's what I say um, yeah but our dog is a whole system a whole ecosystem so Tunga Sila is a physical being she's a physical dog we can see that she has physical aspects oh god I just love her so much love her so much um, but she also is an emotional being uh, she also is a spiritual being so the um, it's not that the soul sits, sits inside the body, it's the body that sits inside the soul. And this is why I love essential oils so much because um, they're described to me and have been described to me and, and some herbalists will say like the essential oil is the seat of the soul of the plant. So you're literally kind of bringing heart energy from the spirit of the plant into the heart energy um, of our dogs. And our dogs, like all animals are including ourselves, we... Um, it's hard for humans. As humans, we're taught to be very linear and very uh, and very practical and look at like material way of thinking or linear way of thinking. Whereas no other animal does that. No other animal has self-limiting doubts, self-limiting beliefs. So for our dogs and all other animals, they are really operating from the heart, an intuitive way of thinking, an intuitive way of responding. So as I'm bringing that essential oil. Um, into Tunka Sila's ecosystem, into like even now, it's not even touching her, but her energy system is going to um, be aware of what I'm bringing into her system um, because everything is a vibration, everything is an energy. So, 
she's snoring away here um, so let's see what happens and let's see what she selects I also have an itchy shoulder I'm supposed to be doing exercise right now and the whole thing with the lockdown I'm eating far too much and not exercising enough so I should be exercising so I'm like oh well no I'll, I'll do this I'll do this instead <laughs> Um, but I have also just had lunch, so bad time to exercise, right? Okay, so, um, yeah, just keep an eye on this tumour. Of course, if it's really a bit tumour, and diagnose and diagnose, don't even know it is a tumour. There's a little lump, it's just below one of her teats. So I'm, I'm just aware that it could be um, a mammary tumour. It's um, about, the size, about the size of a grape, I would say. Um, so I'm just going to keep an eye on, um, you know, the size of it. And just while it's more convenient right now to not take it to the vet if I can avoid it, I'm just going to see if there's any essential oils that she wants. And with that, just monitor it over a, a few weeks. Of, I mean, of course, if the lump gets bigger, we're going to have to go to the vet. Um, I think he wants to. It's in this. Um, so it's in a very. It's right here. So it's in a very very vulnerable area as well. So for any of you that watched the online course or followed the online course. Um, I've been to any of my talks and teachings, it's it's just up from what we class the, as the area of warmth, the warmth area that Tungasila would um, be so attuned to and enjoy when she was born and lying with mam. That's that's an area where they get warm. This is why our dogs love being in touch in this area. But it's also a vulnerable area if our dogs, if dogs kind of um, aren't, don't feel safe in an area or certainly aren't trusting of a human, then they, they really... Um, don't like to be touched in that area so imagine for those that don't know about Tunkasila, Tunkasila is a reactive dog she finds it very difficult to um, interact with strangers and also with other dogs that she doesn't know so imagine a strange vet trying to get into this area um i'm not gonna i'm not gonna rush that if we can help it any tongues she might just bloop, fall off the sofa here well not fall but fall Tunkasila never falls. Right, my little darling. So, let me get some arranged. So, I'm actually going to go in just with um, some of the. Here it comes. See? Okay. Some of the essential oils that. Um, if I can find them. Uh, can support um, like fatty lumps and um, breaking down of. tumours. So I've got lemon, I've got lime, I've got grapefruit, I've got bergamot and I'm inclined to go with lime actually first. Um, let me get out of the way so you can see her. and this is just again what we're doing right now is just focusing on Tugasila and um, sniffing. So again I just allow her, I just make sure she's awake, are you awake Baba? So her eyes are open, she's awake. So hopefully you can see it, yeah you can. So she's just starting to sniff this essential oil. I reckon I'm about, what, maybe 10 centimetres away from her nose right now. Okay, we've just got a nice release response there of her um, tongue coming out. You saw her do that licking. And we've got a gulp. And this is what's really, um, so I know my dogs really well, obviously, because they're my dogs. Um, and they um, are used to having this type of, of therapy as and when they need it. And so all of my dogs are really clear in their yes and no's like if they really don't want something and um, they'll pretty much instantly just move away from it um yeah they are quite clear in that because they they know what this practice is they know what this therapy is huh. my, my husband creeping in as he's trapped what are you grabbing your phone oh no oh he's grabbing his radio he's doing gardening outside okay i've also got the um just let the sun come in a bit i've got the um Stick this Bombay mix as well, uh, and that was what the, that's what the cracking was. Uh, yeah, I've got the curtains open that bit sunny, um, and of course when people are walking their dogs past our house, that's um, prime spot. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, hopefully no one will walk past with the dogs, but I'm keeping an eye on that as well. Okay, well, Tonka season are just she's just in a really nice. She's just right in a nice restful position. Um, her eyes are closed. 
but she's still aware that the line's there. And again, because of my husband coming in, Stevie, because um, there was a distraction there, she would be very aware of the line. And if she, if her body didn't need it at all, then she would have just moved away from it. Um, it can be harder to see in some dogs. Like we really have to. This is like as a zoologist, and um, this is why I really love this practice because I just I just love observing and and finding patterns, looking at patterns, and just observing. Um, but of course, when you are practicing with essential oils, when you're using essential oils for your own dogs, this can be it can become really second nature to you and your dog because you know your dog so well. Once you start practicing this, you really understand what a yes is and what a no is. And so for my dogs, as I say, when I will start offering them essential oils, um, even if they don't want a session, they'll walk away. Um, but certainly with an essential oil that you're offering, if they don't want, then um, she'll, she'll in particular, well, not all of them do. I keep saying all of them do, because if those of you that don't know, we don't have Cola with us anymore. He sadly passed on the 11th of March. Um, so we just have two dogs now at the moment. I say at the moment, we're not getting another dog for a while. I want another wolf dog, but I don't know if Stevie wants another wolf dog <laughs> because I love them and adore them, but they, um, they're quite, um, they're a challenge, which is, which is good, which is good for me, but, um, yeah, haha. <laughs> so yeah, this is Lime. Lime for me is really, um, kind of really excites me Lime from a personal perspective, like, and that's more of a memory thing. Um, it really smells of like lime fruit pastels. Um, and then that just takes me back to childhood memories of um, being with friends, being with family, just like my childhood, which was, say yeah, my childhood was awesome. We had beautiful, this beautiful area of land that we could walk around. We used to call it Sand Hills. I haven't got a clue what it's actually called, but we used to call it Sand Hills. Um, and yeah, just, just out in nature all the time. It was lovely. Running away from the farmer when we were in his fields, getting stung by wasps when we jumped on a we jumped on a wasp nest. Not deliberately, we jumped from one path down to another and the wasps had built their nest under a path which we didn't know and um, yeah, that hurt. That hurt. <laughs> we all felt a bit sad after that. Sorry for ourselves. Okay, so she just keeps like ever so slightly, and if you can see it from the from where my computer is, but she just keeps ever so slightly open her eyes. Oh, there we go. Open them again. So sometimes um, dogs may want to work with essential oil for a while, like we've seen in some Casilla. Sometimes um, they might have a really big response, but it just be a matter of a matter of moments. Um, really deep interest, really deep sniffs. <laughs> Must have got that right, that nice deep sigh. Um, yeah, so really deep sniffs, you might get the um, the tongue coming out to trap the gas molecules um, of the essential oil is, a, is another way of then working with the essential oil. Um, but some, yeah, some essential oils a dog wants to be with for a long, long time. Some essential oils a dog just wants to be with um, just for a matter of moments. And then some essential oils the dog's like, I don't want that at all. And that's when sometimes we've got to be a little bit playful. Like sometimes a dog's like that, mm, I kind of want it, but not in this form. So it might be that um, we'll have to dilute it. So you can dilute it in some like aloe vera. Um, you can dilute it in a little bit of a little bit a little bit of oil, but then a dog may feel inclined to lick it if they if they then want that oil um, because then at that point that's a macronutrient, so it's a fat. Um, so I tend not to dilute it in oil. Um, or what I tend to do to begin with is the first protocol. If I'm like, mm, okay, the the dog is like kind of a yes no yes no, uh, is then I put the lid back on, but just unscrew the lid. So it's not that it's not being taken off um, as a first step. And then also a distance as well. You might just be play, play around with distance of when we bring it too close, the dog moves away. But when we take it away again, you can see the dog moving its, its nose. So they're the things that I, I would do. I 
because she's really restful, she's in a really nice position anyway. Um, periodically she's been kind of opening her eyes, she's like, yeah, I'm still working with the lime, I know the lime's still there. Um, but again, because Tugasil is my dog, I know how sometimes obvious and sometimes subtle her responses can be. I just, there we go, perfect example. So it's like, yeah, that was really nice, ma'am, and working with that lime. But now she wants me to take it away. And then just notice a little bit of lunch on my trousers. <laughs> Got a good job that you can't see it. <laughs> okay, so I'm now going to go to lemon. Same thing. So I just want her to just be aware. Hi, Baba. Um, make sure that can, you guys can still see me as well. So again, just bringing the essential oil in, not too fast. So some people will, right, you know, don't take it right to the dog's nose to begin with. Okay, so our eyes are like, I don't know, kind of closing and opening, but not fully opening. And there's the same thing, this essential oil, it's probably about eight centimetres away. And actually it's quite nice because I can just leave that there and I uh, don't want to turn my backs to you lovely people. But, uh, we have got a little bit of distraction going on. I don't know if you can hear we've got some banging going on outside. Um, yeah, and then we just, the dog has really taken the essential oil. Just going to do little check-ins every, every now and again. Um, if, it, if this was, if I was new to working with essential oils or if this was now at a client's dog, um, then I had to do that for client, but it felt necessary. <laughs> I don't know what that represents. Um, is yeah, I would just every now and again just touch the dog just to make sure that they were, weren't in a deep sleep, they were aware that we were in the room, I'd spot an essential oil near them. Um, just like that, so they can make um, the decision of do they want to move closer, do they want to move further away. Um, just because it's Tungasila and she's used to working with the essential oils and she's used to knowing that if she is a definite no, not necessarily about the essential oil, but also about um, that she just doesn't want a session. Like sometimes from a, from a human perspective, sometimes like, oh, I'm going to do something nice for my dogs. I'm going to get some essential oils out. The dog doesn't, doesn't want a session. Um, then they're well within their right to, to let us know that as well. Um, hopefully you can see uh, the essential oil bottle. Yeah, you can. Just is it perspective hilarious? It's like if you turn around and eat it. Oh, did that work? I don't know if it worked. <laughs> So just every now and again, her nose is like doing a little rabbit twitch. There's the movie that does when the rabbit does that, isn't there? What movie is it? You're gonna have to, for those of you that are watching this, you're gonna have to remind me what movie it is where they do a little, is it Bewitched even? It might be Bewitched where she a little shovels her nose. Anyway, I'm digressing. Yeah, and then um, what's really beautiful from a therapeutic perspective is that there's nothing nicer than seeing a peaceful dog rest, right? Just a, oh, it's Saturday, it's still a pandemic, we're still in um, social isolation, so you feel like a nana nap, because watching your sleepy dog, your dog in a relaxed state is equally working within your vibration of like, oh, I really feel like relaxing now, then go for it, right? The weekend after all. And what I'm probably going to do with Tuncasilo is over the next, uh, well, week if she wants, I'm just going to offer, I'm just going to do this with her now every day and just gauge, um, yeah, just get a gauge of what she wants, when she's had enough, and then when she, if and when she starts to show no interest, then I'm going to stop for a few days, um, just see how she's doing, check in with her, and uh, 
then go back to if she wants more essential oils. Um, yeah, I just don't want to be, I don't want to work with the plants, I don't want to work with the aromatic medicines um, in a way that's kind of looking at symptoms, if that makes sense, in terms of like, okay, use this essential oil for X, Y, and Z. It, it, they can work in that way, um, but because the essential oil isn't energetic and our dog isn't energetic, or our dog isn't energy, and the essential oil isn't energy, um, I don't know, I'm just feeling really excited to get people to just expand um, and become more intuitive, I guess. The, um, the Rather than going beyond like the physical thing that we see of the essential oil being in a bottle and the physical thing in terms of what we see as a dog, going beyond that and literally seeing, like, depending on Tunga Sela's composition, Tunga Sela's ecosystem, Tunga Sela's vibration, that will vary um, daily, what does um, what is going to match and suit her vibration? And once we um, become practice of this, it's just like anything. So if you don't know, and like right now, I was supposed to be practicing my animal flow, which I love. Like I only just started last week, but it's really tough. Um, so I'm feeling quite tired, which is a weird dream in now. Um, why was I talking about exercise? I was talking about exercise because of something. Um, yeah, it's gone. It escapes me because it was about exercise. I really struggle. That's, that's the, what I'm struggling with, you know. I'm really struggling to exercise. I find that really, find it really hard to motivate myself. Um, but yeah, I want us to look kind of beyond um, the, the physical and the practical and uh, practice. That's what I was going to say. So, yes, I'm supposed to be exercising and practicing some new exercises. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and I'm terrible, I'm hopeless, I'm hopeless at this, at this exercise, yet for some reason I'm um, really challenging my, sh my shelf, I turned into Sean Connery there, um, I'm really challenging myself to, to do it, to practice it and to change, um, and to become good at it, it's really, really out my depth, but um, that's the whole point, the whole thing with like people say like, can't do it, I'll not be able to, it's like you just, um, Particularly when you do it with your own dog, and if you do it with your own dog, um, you know, you you just, it's almost like, just take a moment and sit with it, and just ask your body, like, what is it, like, what does a yes feel inside of me? What does, what does a yes feel like? Um, and then sit with it again and ask, what does a no feel like? Like, it instantly changes for me and just practice with that and then that's the thing you really become really familiar of like well what am I drawn to for my for my dog or um yeah having and even if you're just getting a small range of essential oils you don't have to get a hundred just um as a practice of handling them and being with them and smelling them and how your dog interacts with them you know again we kind of like to a bit like my exercise class at the moment you know I'm like I want to be able to do it all right now because as humans that's kind of we push ourselves or we um, I don't know kind of forget to tell ourselves that it's okay to to be a beginner because it is I mean at the moment I'm a pre-beginner for this class like that's what I'm telling everybody like I know I'm in the beginners class but guys can we have a class before the beginners because that's where I need to be So we've got, we've got lemon and lime, I'm going to come back to these. Got Charlie down beside us sitting in the sun. Um, and actually already we've got a nice introduction and um, yeah, just a nice uh, footage, a nice, uh, she's dreaming, a nice um, movie, recording, recording, that's the word. Oh, of, um, of just how a dog can take to the essential oils because um, you know sometimes it can end up being hours and hours long which hey I don't mind it's beautiful for me it's a beautiful thing to watch but I don't know I don't think you maybe want to 
we record this for hours and hours and hours. I would do because that means, oh, I've got to get up exercise. Um, yes. Huh. Hey, folks. Okay, so I'm just caught sailing in again, just so because I'm going to introduce now a different essential oil. So her eyes are open. Hand it to her. Well, I don't hand it to her. But bring it into towards her muzzle, her nose. You can still see, yeah, you can still see. I'm just going to give her a little bit of a. Uh, this is grapefruit. This one. Okay, so her eyes open. Yeah, we've got a nice, nice inhale. And like again, if you remember just with the lime, what we saw is that she worked with the lime for a while and then she was like, oh, okay, that's put me in a good place, but I don't want to um, breathe it in anymore. And she moved her muzzle. So there's a lot of controversy. I mean, there's a lot of um, oh, um, conversation, discussion, even debate um, about, you know, which essential oils are good um, in terms of like, where'd you get them from? Um, and equally a lot of discussion debate about you know what you should do what you shouldn't do an element of this is about yeah being safe an element of this is about um, being sensible if we're really inexperienced um, then then that's fine because we all as I said before if we're new to something then like that's something to be proud of to be like wow like I know nothing about this but I'm really excited to learn and often we try and jump that part, which can be dangerous. So, yeah, if you are inexperienced, if you're new, then I would really only focus on offering essential oils to your dogs so that they can inhale. Hi, Charles. Um, you might find with some essential oils that the dog really does want to uh, want to lick or want to have them on their body. And normally, like if they want to lick it, you're going to see the dog's going to want to lick it. Um, if they want it on their body, dogs can do different things. Sometimes they'll literally, they'll roll, they'll roll onto the essential oil. And um, sometimes they'll take their paw and with and guide your hand to an area where they want it applied. Um, sometimes they'll sniff an essential oil and look at you with, with a knowing of like, please put that on me, put, put that on me right now. Um, and then you're like, you've got to guide me a bit more and um, for those of you that are really intuitive like for those of you that already can do animal communication can do soul work um, with your dog already then you know it can be even simpler than that of just connecting to the dog and asking what the dog wants what the dog needs and um, what the dog would like where the dog would like it but for now um, as I say there is a bit of a protocol about how we're doing oil topically how we would allow a dog to lick an oil um, this is all based on like vibration. So if Tunka Seeda wanted to to lick an oil, it's almost like um, as I bring that essential oil into her ecosystem, as I bring that essential oil into her energy field, it's her soul part, it's her spiritual part, it's her vibrational part that is going, wow, I am so drawn to this that to bring it into my system, I am asking my body to protrude the tongue and lick um so it is still a it's a it's a vibration speaking to the vibration a vibration from the dog speaking to the vibration of the essential oil um in a nutshell it is a little bit more deeper than that it is a little bit more um yeah detailed so that's why you know this is just a saturday afternoon i'm sitting down with tunka Sila. i'm going to offer some essential oils um I'm going to record it to see if it's helpful for anybody um, whilst people like myself can't go out and see dogs or if you're new to it or the concept of essential oils is new. Um, yeah, with that there is a whole load of guidelines, you know, um, there are certain essential oils to avoid, there's certain essential oils, um, you know, in terms of their sell by date, their use by date. So there is, you know, some teachings with it, there is some respect, there is some understanding that is required. Oh God, I 
Jean just love her lips. Oh my god, I love this dog so much. She's just lush. Okay, so that was, um, so what you could do if it's like, okay, she's moved a muzzle away, maybe I've gone a bit too close. So you could, if the dog moves the muzzle away, you could take it back to them just to see if they want a bit more. Just because I know Tunga Seela, I just, I'm so used to, um, I, I just know her responses now. That's um, her telling me that she's had enough of that oil. So now we've had lemon, we've had lime, we've had grapefruit. Um, I feel drawn to go to... Um, hmm, I did get the bergamot out. Yeah, I'm going to go with bergamot, I think. And we might get to a point because she's worked with quite, well, she's worked for a while with the essential oils now, with those three. Um, the dog's vessel, the dog's being, the dog's body, um, can get to a point where they're like, I could, I could have more, I'd quite like some more, but um, I've, had e I've had enough for now. Uh, and we again we honour that. It's not about um, dictating how when we start when we finish. The dog dictates that um, because our dogs have opinions. They know who they are. They know what their body needs, what their body wants. So um, yeah, it's not it's not fair for us to go. This is the start time. This is the end time. The the dog will decide that for us. So again, I'm just going to let her know. Hey, Bubba. Oh. Again, the nose. Okay, so our eyes are open. Um, eyes are definitely open now. She said, uh, "Stevie, come in." He's very excited. He got a new um, he got a new hat today for being outdoors. It looks smart though. It looks good. So our eyes just are opening and closing, opening and closing. And this is the thing, if you've got, um, you know, if you are a bit pushed for time, um, or you want to spread it throughout the day, that's, that's fine. Like, again, we can get so conditioned and so focused on the, the practical of it, of, um, you know, when should I do it? And, you know, I need to factor in three hours, but my, you know, life's still busy. Like, there's a, there's a poetry to this work as well. You know, we are, um, as Charlie, um, yeah, looking at, as I say, like, the spirit of the bee speaking to the spirit of the bee. are still just like ever slightly open and then they keep from a little bit and then closing and then opening a little bit and closing. So if we've got like, um, I don't know, if it's more like if we've got something that's quite um, chronic, so whether it's like um, intense emotional states um, or if it's something that's quite like aggressive, like if a dog's really physically unwell and they've got like an infection, um, 
I've really run down, something like that, then I would be doing more, almost like short, short bursts of sessions. So um, I would be doing sessions maybe, well, again, up to the dog, but trying, you know, three or four times a day. Um, I'm just, I'm just going to monitor how this, how this goes with Tunkasina. So her nose is still engaged, her nose is still um, every now and again just sniffing the bergamot. And again, what I can do actually is just place the essential oil. Oh. And let's just see if she's had enough. First of all, I just want to give her time to see where she's going to position her nose again too. What's the time? I haven't got a clue how long I've been recording for. So. I'm just going to bring it back to her. Okay, that'll show the plum. You're in a nice place. She's in a nice place. I should just sniff it again. Looking out the window in case there's dogs going to come. Charlie's sitting in the sun. Okay. Oh, no, sorry, Tonks. So I was going to take it away, but that, uh, she just get her nose, she just a little sniff again with her nose. Do you know what? Let's go for a nice. Um, I'm inclined to go for uh, nutmeg. I really love nutmeg. Uh, not so that the casino will need it. If I can actually find it. These were in alphabetical order, but they. They're obviously not now, for some reason. Huh. Not nutmeg, because I can't find it. No, 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 no. I cannot find my nutmeg. Well, that's not helpful, is it? Try a nice, um, thanks Babs. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just because of, she's gone to the other end of the sofa anyway, it might be that she's had enough because again, just no one took a sealer. That is normally an indication for her, not necessarily for every dog, but just an indication for her. Where am I going to put that? Just a little bit of a uh, bit 
bit of ginger. Oh, you guys can't see. Hang on. Okay, so what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to um, continue with this practice with, with some concealer. Um, there's also sniffing in the ginger, again nice response there. So I'm um, just going to have a bit of quiet time with her now. Um, continue with the essential oils and um, just going to do this over a few days. Monitor her, see what else she wants. And uh, I'll get back to you. Have a lovely day. I'm going to put that on the floor right now as I stop the video and then do my exercises later. <laughs>